Today I'll show you an insanely simple way to remove background shadows in Photoshop with some sneaky selection tricks to save you some time along the way. But if you ever find it hard to remember all of the steps in videos like this one, I created a free PDF cheat sheet for this lesson that'll tell you how to get later in this video. But for now, let's get into Photoshop. Now the shadow that we're going to remove from this particular image is the one of our subject on the wall, just to make the image look a little bit more clean overall. And the easiest way that we can do that is using the patch tool. But the problem with the patch tool is that it doesn't do a very good job to allow you to easily select around the edges of a subject because we need to keep our subject's arm and her hand intact. So we're going to use the combination of two different selection areas to help our patch tool do a better job here. To begin, I'll click on the select subject button with my image layer selected to select my person from the photo. Now I'll click on the new layer icon and then click on the layer mask icon to apply that selection area of our subject onto this new layers layer mask. We're not actually going to do anything with this particular layer, but this layer mask will allow us to subtract from our patch tool selection. Now to use the patch tool, we're going to click on our image layer and press command or control J to duplicate it. I'll double click on the layer name and call it to patch. The reason we're duplicating this is so that we can work non-destructively. Now with the patch layer selected, I'll activate the patch tool by clicking inside of the toolbar here. You'll find it within the spot healing brush tools, the remove tool, and then the patch tool right here. Up in the options bar, I'll set the patch type to content aware, structure set to four, and the color set to five. I'll now click and drag roughly around the shadow that I want to remove. I don't need to be too careful about this because we will be able to refine this afterwards. I'll now let go. Now with our selection area defined with the patch tool, we'll be able to click and drag from this selection area to define a new area of the photo that we want to replace those contents with. So I'm just going to move to the other part of the wall like so, and I'll make sure that that cement area is lining up at the bottom so that that line continues in a straight line. I'll now let go once I'm happy with those changes. Now at this point we have removed the shadows, but we've also removed our subject's arm, which is where the previous layer mask comes into play. Once we have replaced the contents of the patch tool area, and we still have that active selection, we'll hold command or control and alt or option, and then click on the layer mask of that transparent layer we created previously. So again, command or control, alt or option, and click on the layer mask of that transparent layer while the patch tool selection is active. Clicking on that will update your selection area, and now with the patch layer selected, we can add a layer mask. So now the patch adjustment only applies behind our subject. Zooming in to double check that we don't have any mistakes, you can see that there are a few little issues going on here, including a bit of the shadow still revealing around our subject's hands. Luckily, we can just click on the patch layer mask here zoom in, and then using our brush tool, we can just scale down our brush to a nice small size, and with our foreground color set to white, we can just go and paint out these areas like so, effectively removing them from our image and revealing the patch tool area instead, which is going to be that white wall in this case. Now from there, you might be left over with a few trouble areas, such as this weird shadow happening up here, as well as there's a bit of a bump going on in the cement and this area doesn't look totally good either. So we can use the remove tool as well as the clone stamp tool to touch this stuff up. With the patch layer selected, I'll click on the layer thumbnail and then go ahead and select the remove tool. With remove after each brush stroke unchecked, I'll just paint over the area that I want to remove and I'll press enter on my keyboard. That will easily remove that shadow. And if you're not sure how the remove tool works, you can learn more about it in this video right here. From there, we'll go down to the edge of the cement where things are looking a bit wonky. And again, I'll just go and paint over these weird shadowed bits with my remove tool, press enter to remove them. And then the same thing over any bumps in the horizontal line, press enter, and that will smooth everything out for us. Now, now as for this weird area down here, I'll go ahead and grab my clone stamp tool. And with the opacity and flow at 100%, my sample set to current and below, I'll just go ahead and hold alter option and sample an area nearby like so. Clicking on this area while holding alter option will set my sample point. And now I can just go and paint over the problem parts of my image to complete the result. So I'm pretty happy with how that looks. 
that's fine for me. And zooming out, we have now completed the process and looking at our before and after, we have easily removed that background shadow using some simple steps and some fun selection methods. So like I mentioned earlier, if you wanna grab that free lesson cheat sheet for this video, you can find it down in the description below. Just type in your name and email so I know where to send it and a nice new PDF will instantly appear in your inbox. By subscribing to my email list, you'll also get first dibs on all my future cheat sheets that I release weekly. So if you love using Photoshop, you'll probably love these extra freebies as well. But anyways, now that you know how to remove shadows from your photos, be sure to check out this next video here to learn an insanely simple way to remove more complex objects from your images. You can learn exactly how in this video right here, and I hope to see you there next.